Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Ask Sebi, and today we are going to talk about how to book Cafe Pacific First Class using points. This is one of the best products out there when you think about airlines, when you think about the top airlines for first class. So this is something a lot of people want to do. For us, Mandy and I, we got very lucky and we ended up booking it on the New Year's Day deal that we're probably never going to see again. For a lot of other people though, and for ourselves beforehand, we were looking to use points. We'll run through a few different currencies and also how you might want to think about this. If you do want to skim read, I would recommend going to the blog post down below. It's going to be in the description box or going on asksebi.com just because there's going to be a lot of information. These are the items we're going to talk about as well as some timestamps that you might want to jump to given that this is a pretty heavy topic. So starting off of why you might want to do this. For a lot of people, this is easily a top 10 first class product and for some people, it's also a top five. If you think of Emirates, if you think of all those other ones that I think people put on top of it, but this is up there. For the first class cabin, there's going to be six seats. So pretty small cabin and you have gigantic seats. I'm someone who I wouldn't consider myself small and you could probably fit two, maybe two and a half of me in the main seats. Before boarding, you're going to get access to the Cafe Pacific First Class Lounges if you're leaving from Hong Kong. And this example is primarily US to Hong Kong, just to keep it a bit simple, but you can expand it and look into specific elements if you want to fly somewhere like Africa. If you do want to see those lounge videos, you can head over to Sebi Fung, where we did very in-depth videos for each of the two first class lounges. The product itself is pretty comfortable. I've done a few business class ones where you still have that lie flat seat, but it's just not as comfortable if you're not super slender. So for me, the fact that I could actually roll around and sleep on my side, which is what I prefer, was pretty good. And by sleep on my side, I'm, I'm like sprawled out. The highlights you guys probably know about is caviar as well as stuff like Blue Label. Depending on how full the flight is, you might be able to get second or third caviars. For Blue Label, I had three cups and I was trying to finish my fourth, but didn't want to get too intoxicated. If you're looking to do this with cash, you're typically spending about $8,700 one way and about $14,500 for round trip. So for me, I wouldn't pay that much because that's pretty crazy. And that's why I really like to use points because I can experience things that I otherwise wouldn't pay for. At most, I would probably pay about $3,000 for one way per person if it was a special occasion. So if it's a honeymoon, if it's a 10 year anniversary, 3,000 is probably the cap that I'm willing to go up to. That's the benefit of points. And actually before this deal came along, I was already accumulating points for this specific redemption. In order to book this, there's three popular currencies. We have Asia Miles, Alaska, as well as American Airlines. The big benefit of Asia Miles is that it is run by Cafe Pacific. So there is going to be a bit more award availability. You also have access to these flights 12 months prior to departure. On the flip side for Alaska, as well as American Airlines, you only have access to this availability 331 days before departure. So about one less month, 11 months instead of that full year. If you're someone looking to travel during a busy time, this can play a pretty big role just because that space that might have gone to Alaska and American Airlines accessible for them might already be gone because people booked it already. For both of these, if you can't find availability, I would recommend looking out about two weeks prior to departure. This obviously means you have to have a very flexible schedule, but there are people who end up just checking every day for the next two weeks or so if they have unlimited vacation, which is pretty common among tech, or if you just have some vacation time that you can implement and use pretty quickly. Another thing too is that it's pretty difficult to find two award spaces for first class. So you might want to book yourself as first class and someone else's business class, and then see if there's any space afterwards to kind of change it within that two week period. The benefit of Asia Miles is more availability as well as being able to book before everyone else. The disadvantage is that it's harder to accrue the points and it's arguably a bit more expensive. For Alaska as well as American Airlines, it's easier to get the points based off the scarcity aspect, but it's also harder to use it for this specific purpose. Let's jump into booking this with Asia Miles because I think it's going to be the most complicated of the bunch, but for some people it's going to be the logical one depending on when you want to travel. For Asia Miles, we can look into their award chart and one big thing to be aware of is that we are looking for the cheaper rates and not the special higher price rates. With most award type situations, you can pay more points and you don't really want to do that because it's not really worth it. You're better off looking for future dates if you have even a bit of flexibility. It's kind of like buying something for full price for $2 versus waiting for a sale for $150. 
Starting off of San Francisco, we know that it's 6,900 miles from Malakalk, and then looking at the details for how the chart works, it's going to be type two. This means that it's going to cost 110,000 miles for a standard fare. Again, ignore the choice fare because we're looking for a deal rather than paying that full price. For New York to Hong Kong, if you look at Malakalk, it's going to be 8,000 miles, meaning that it's going to be 125,000 points for one way. So your goal here is to accumulate enough points in order to do this. There's a few different ways to do it because there's a lot of different point currencies that you can use that transfer to Asia miles. I think one consideration is grabbing the Cafe Pacific card by Synchrony Bank. The pro of it is that you're getting points. The con is that there's nothing to downgrade to and it's not really a useful card outside of the bonus. That's one of the cards I ended up getting for my initial plan, but it's also one of the few cards I ended up closing because there's no downgrade path, there's nothing else I can do with that card, and it just didn't really make sense to keep long term. Another good option is going to be American Express, where you're going to be able to transfer points at a one-to-one -one rate. American Express Platinum Card Public Offer is 60,000 points. The Gold Card Current offers 35,000 points, but we've seen it at 50,000 points in the past before, so just really depends on timing. One thing to be aware of is that there might be promotions for these transfers in the future, so it might transfer at a better rate than one-to-one, -one, but for right now, for the standard rate, it's one-to-one. -one. City also does the same thing for the one-to-one -one for their thank you points, and there's two big options here. Another option is going to be transferring Marriott points at a three-to-one rate. So let's say if you have 45,000 points, divide it by three, and that's going to be the number of Asia miles that you get. Marriott also has a promotion where when you transfer 60,000 points, you get an extra 5,000. So 60,000 divided by three is 20,000, plus 5,000 is 25,000 Asia miles for those 60,000 Marriott points. If you're someone who doesn't care about hotels, if you're someone who prefers Airbnbs, transferring points to airlines, maybe not this one, maybe to Alaska, is typically going to be the best bets. You have a bunch of cards and the goal is to get to the 110,000 or 125,000 points to cover that flight. Of the three options, I think this is going to be the more expensive one and the big reason is because there might be a better use case for those American Express points if you want to do something like a and around the world trips for first class and business class or even just around trip one if you're going to Tokyo 2020. If this was my only option though, if I didn't want to get too many other cards and I was trying to propose or something, then I probably would still drop the 110,000 points because it makes a lot of sense. Before we continue to the other options, if you are someone who wants to learn more about any of the cards that we talked about, and we mentioned quite a few of them, and you want to support our channel, pretty easy way to do that would be to use the links on our sites or the links in the description box down below. The second method we're going to talk about is using Alaska points, and this was going to be one of the other methods I used. The idea being that I would do some using the Asia miles because I got the Asia miles card and then a bunch using Alaska because I feel like it's cheaper relatively compared to the other options. With Alaska, we are going to be using their award chart and I feel like Alaska points are probably the most powerful miles if you want to do these premium redemptions. So looking at USA to Asia and their partners, Cafe for first class is going to be 70,000 points. We'll save business class for another time, but it's only 50,000 points for that one-way ticket. One of the other benefits of Alaska points is that it's going to be 70,000 points whether you're leaving from New York or whether you're leaving from San Francisco. With Asia miles, you are paying a difference depending on where you're leaving from and a distance you're flying. Looking at ways to get Alaska points, we have the Bank of America Alaska card, the Alaska business card, as well as transferring over from Marriott's. For the personal as well as the business card, the sign-up bonus is 40,000 Alaska points after $2,000 of minimum spend in the first three months. You can see how that feels a lot cheaper because you're looking at two cards versus a few cards for Asia miles. The other option is transferring over Marriott points at that three to one rate. So 45,000 points is going to be 15,000 Alaska miles plus that 5,000 boost when you transfer 60,000 points. To me, I think the cost of the Alaska cards is just a bit cheaper relatively if you spend that money anyways. Looking at CPP, I'm willing to pay $3,000 for this flight and redeeming it for 70,000 miles is 4.3 cents per points. If I was someone who wanted to do this with Alaska points, I would probably pick up the personal card as well as the business card and call it a day and you have this covered. And you might want to try a different product on the way back. If you can't get business cards, I would probably pick up one of the Bonvoy cards as well as the Alaska personal card. And again, you're covered, you're good and then try to fly something else back. American Airlines is going to be the last one, and here we are going to look into their award chart, and for Hong Kong, we are going to be in Region 2. 
This means that we're looking at 110,000 points for first class. Here we have a bunch of different options from City as well as Barclays. I would recommend watching videos on those specific issuers for rules that they have. So for City, they have a 24 month rule based off the family of cards. In this case, it might make sense to pick up one of those City American Airlines cards and then to move towards Barclays afterwards to get the remaining points that you need. Myriad points can also be transferred, but I don't think this is a good use case because there's other currencies that are harder to get than City AA points. So for me, it just makes more sense to earn them. This is something I've considered as I've been building up my American Airlines point balance, but for me, Etihad makes a bit more sense for their first class product, which is 115,000 points for their apartments. This kind of ties back into what we talked about with the Asia miles and American Express points and stuff. If you have a lot of different currencies, you want to make sure that the currencies are working as hard for you as possible based off what they can do. The big question you probably have is whether it's worth it, and for me, I think it is, just because points allow me to do things that I otherwise wouldn't pay for and would never thought I would have experienced. I grew up in a pretty normal, humble home. I think I flew once or twice before, and that's pretty much it. As a kid, I didn't travel that much. In case anyone cares, I think I did Disney World once, I think I did a Disney cruise once, and the rest was mostly road trips to go outlet shopping. For you, it might not make sense, and one of the things I say a lot and that I think people really need to realize is that your mileage may vary, do what makes sense for you based off your circumstances, based off what you care about. If you want to learn more about the 10 or 15 cards that we talked about at this point, and you want to support our channel, we have links on our site and also down below in the description box. Hopefully that was helpful. And my question for you guys is if you had to pick which of these three currencies would you use or which one are you planning to use? Let me and the community know down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. If you know anyone else who benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share the video with them because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.